Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Perfect. Uh, I'm not sure, like, from where to get that thing in the view. Uh, you remember, I used to get that uh, uh, indexing oh, and everything. Uh, where should panel. I? Yes, view? yes, yes, yes. Yeah, navigation panel. Yes, yes. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this. Okay. Uh, so we were on, I think uh, we completed first part, right? Uh, we complete six, maybe. Yes. Yeah. So today we have to start with seventh one. New module. Yeah. Right. Perfect. Is that okay. complete five? Or... Okay. Can you check? One more time, six. six uh, yep. more yes, six. yes. Yes, we can check. Uh, I think, yes, 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 we did it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. That was done. OK, so seventh module. So uh, it is distinguishing between the various AnyPoint platform service models. OK. OK. So what is the difference between control plane and runtime plane according to you? We have already discussed this thing, right? In the starting only, we discussed this. Yes, yes, I remember. Uh... Yes. So what do you remember about control plane and runtime plane? Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, uh, you explained last time uh, for control plane, uh, we are. Is there something? Mm -hmm. so in the control plane, we have like when we are uh, developing, for example, RAML, uh, we have design center, uh, we create RAML specification and public points. Uh, mm -hmm. and, Oh, something is your phone or yes okay 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 my phone yes it was there now it's uh, fine yeah we publish to any point exchange we can share uh, our api uh, and mm -hmm. we can implement a pay policy in the contract mm -hmm. plan uh, uh but when you come to runtime uh, plan uh mm -hmm. for uh like development uh, no no mm -hmm. when we have deploy and uh, we are controlling like uh, how many like uh, workers there how many like vertically uh, horizontally how we're going to uh, implement our uh, yes that's my understanding for now yes yes control plane is the plane from where you can control your deployments Right. From mm -hmm. where you you can do all the controls, you can do anything uh, like uh, publishing your uh, data or everything that from where you can mm -hmm. basically control. OK. And runtime plane is where your code is actually running. Right. So mm -hmm. your cloud right. hub will be the part of your runtime plane. OK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. let's go ahead. Uh, identifying the various control plane deployment options uh, provided by the AnyPoint platform, right? So mm -hmm. the first one is this also we covered. <laughs> so it will be a bit right. faster. So MuleSoft hosted. So MuleSoft hosted, we have AnyPoint platform, right? Mm -hmm. We have right. AWS regions in AnyPoint platform where when you are going to do the deployment, you will get the options for regions, right? You can mm -hmm. select either US region, either EU region, right? And uh, the next one is your uh, cloud, uh, sorry, government cloud. On the government cloud also, you can do the deployment. OK. Uh, OK, oh, so this is, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but this is related to the control plane from where you are controlling, actually, right? Identifying the various mm -hmm. control plane deployment provided by the AnyPoint platform. Yeah, mm -hmm. what you what you were saying. So the region part. Uh, mm -hmm. So like the default is like USA is Virginia, 
or mm -hmm. EU Frankfurt. So yes. What what does it mean like a region like this the server where we found? Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, in Cloud Hub 1.0, you remember uh, behind the scenes, it uses EC2 machines of AWS, right? Each worker yes. is your EC2 machine in Cloud Hub 1.0, right? So mm -hmm. EC2 machine, where it is actually, okay? It is in US region or it is in EU region. This is what it explains because AWS is being used behind the scenes for uh, your Cloud Hub deployment. Okay. Okay. You mean AWS means like the one AWS, Amazon something? Or, uh, uh, that's confusing me. What's AWS? Okay. Mean? Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, it says that it is related to the control plane, but I think this is related to the runtime plane. It is where you are actually deploying your code, right? So, uh, so either you can deploy it through the AnyPoint platform through uh, to your Cloud Hub, right? It, it th this is not clear, right? Uh, this uh, this slide is not that much clear, okay? But if you are going to deploy your code on the Cloud Hub. Okay, so on Cloud Hub 1.0, 1 behind the scenes, it uses AWS. AWS, you know what is AWS? Amazon or something? Yes, Website. yes, yes. Cloud service, yes. Cloud service provider. So we have multiple uh, cloud service providers, like your AWS is there, okay? Your Azure is there, right? Your mm -hmm. Google Cloud is there. Mm -hmm. Correct. Right? But behind the scenes, Cloud Hub uses AWS. Oh, okay. okay. So cloud in Cloud Hub 1.0, whenever you do the deployment, uh, just give me a second. I can show you that as well. Uh, any point studio login, any point platform login. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Since I was not having laptop, I I was not even able to remember that today is a class. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. When I got your message, then only it reminded me, oh, man, today is the class. Oh. I did. Yeah, recently, I, mean, I switched oh. the company. <laughs> That's why I don't have my laptop. Recently, I switched yeah. my company. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Okay, so it was a course set something, but I can create a new one. I think I'm not even remember that. And I think that was also expired. Uh, okay, sign up. Okay, email addresses like ptr12, the gmail.com. Yes, this patra and phone number. I think it's not necessary. Company, company, let's say course jet. Okay, sad. Oh, okay. It make course jet. It. And the uh, password I can use any password for now. Okay, I'm not a robot. I agree. Perfect. Go ahead. Oh, it asked for phone number. Okay. Yeah. And six five four nine six nine five. Okay. Perfect. User already exists. Okay. The user. This was the username actually. <laughs> yeah. You can. You have to change new username. Mm, yes. Or what I can do now? I got the username. I can try with this. <laughs> Okay, the password you can receive. Okay, no. password. I think I remember that. Oh, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's try. If it worked, then okay. Otherwise, yeah, it worked. Yeah. Perfect. 
not now never okay so whenever we do any deployment okay. let's go here come on come on it's a bit slow So whenever we do any deployment in Cloud Hub 1.0, it asks for the uh, region, right? So that mm -hmm. region it is talking about. Okay. I don't okay. know why it is very slow. Okay. So for now, sandbox. Okay. Got it. Let's say I want to deploy any application and I want to use Cloud Hub 1.0 for now. That is Cloud Hub. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. So here in the Cloud Hub, I am providing, why not? Okay, by default, it is using, I think, uh, your uh, US region only because this is my trial account. So it is not giving me the oh. option, I think. Right. So otherwise, you will get the option that uh, your application can be deployed in uh, whatever uh, region you want to deploy it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Either you are deploying it from here, either you are deploying it from the AnyPoint Studio. Okay. So this is oh, what okay. it is talking about. Uh, this slide. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So government cloud. Uh, I'm not that sure. Uh, if it is talking about the runtime plane, like you can deploy your code on the uh, government cloud also. Okay. But if the control plane is there, then I don't think so that uh, government cloud can be used. Okay. Because for uh, control plane, you can only use the uh, your any point platform. That's, that is the case. Right. Or uh, for the customer hosted, you are having PCE, that is private cloud edition. Okay. This is now uh, not being used. Earlier, this was the option where uh, it was having both runtime plane and the control plane, both on the uh, customer hosted environment. Okay. 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 This we already discussed in the sheet. Uh, like we created a diagram on the paint also. If you have taken the screenshot, you will get that. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I was reading about PCE. What is PCE? Supported configuration for PCE. Okay. So you can also read it out. This is on the Google only. I just copy pasted it. Okay. But now PCE is uh, is not being used. Okay. And uh, it's a it earlier it was supported. Okay. And it supports mm -hmm. two network configuration. That is four node or seven node. Okay. okay, it is to uh, ensure the high availability and the performance. Each node must run on its own server in both the configuration. Okay, that means each node will be on a different server. Okay, for higher availability. Okay, okay. So identifying the various runtime plane deployments options provided by the AnyPoint platform. Okay, so you can deploy your code on the. Uh, uh, Cloud Hub and uh, this PCE. Okay, so the MuleSoft hosted runtime plane uses the cloud-based uh, this infrastructure that is IPaaS. Okay, so your okay. Cloud Hub actually is a IPaaS. Right, so okay. it is provisioned and managed by the MuleSoft. Right, and the service is called Cloud Hub. Clear? Okay. So it is MuleSoft hosted where you are deploying your code. Okay, and okay. if we go to the uh, customer hosted one. So the customer hosted uh, runtime plane infrastructure is provisioned and managed by the customer. Okay, in non-mule hosted cloud environments. Okay, so uh, it will not be deployed in the cloud hub. You are not going to deploy your code in the cloud hub. So you will be deploying mm -hmm. your code on the customer hosted runtime plane. Let's say you are a customer. You have your own servers. Okay, so either mm -hmm. I can you can deploy your code there. Okay. okay, if you are having some accounts in AWS, there also you can deploy your code, right? Mm -hmm. If you're having okay. account in your A Azure, there also you can deploy your code. So it is give, uh, giving the example for uh, this AWS, Amazon Cloud, and this uh, Azure, GCP Cloud, uh, Google Cloud. Okay, so either you can deploy it to the cloud, but it is handled by the customer only. 
or either it you can deploy it on premise like uh, the customer have its own servers not in the cloud but has its own servers on its virtual machine or bare metal okay or containers like the dockers okay in each service model the same mule runtime binary is used okay since it is everything in uh, mulesoft is being created on java okay so that means it is like create once use multiple times right so yes, yes. same binary file will be used in both the cases so same will be used here also and same here will be used in the customer hosted also okay mm -hmm. so features of uh, mulesoft hosted runtime plane okay mulesoft hosted runtime plane that means cloud okay so deployment to the mulesoft hosted runtime plane uses a uh, cloud based infrastructure that is ipas which was already explained in the previous slide okay a new virtual machine is automatically provisioned for the new mule runtime Okay. So whenever you are going to deploy something, okay, so behind the scenes it will generate the new virtual machine. Okay, so this is called mm -hmm. the Cloud Hub Worker. Okay, so this virtual mm -hmm. machine is created. That means each worker behind the scene is uses virtual machine. Okay, but in AWS mm -hmm. terms, it will be called as EC2 machine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Each Mule applications is deployed to the Mule separate Mule runtime. Okay, that means whenever you are deploying any application, the separate Mule runtime will be used behind the scenes. Okay, that mm -hmm. runs in the isolated Cloud Hub worker. Okay, that means in same Cloud Hub worker, you cannot deploy multiple applications. In one worker, you can deploy only one application. Correct? Mm -hmm. yep. A Mule application has uh, can be scaled vertically and horizontally so we have already discussed what is horizontal scaling uh, whenever you are increasing the workers let's say you are having a, a very high load in that case you can do the horizontal scaling okay vertical scaling that means in the single worker or in the worker that you are having you are just increasing the configuration let's say increase the cpu size increase the memory and all okay so that is called vertical scaling in which case you can use this let's say you are processing processing a very uh, very huge file okay so in that case you need more ram right so in that case you can increase the worker size okay so horizontal scale scaling means number of workers okay and vertical scale means worker size okay mm -hmm. Other components of MuleSoft hosted runtime plane. So first one is your Cloud Hub provides the load balancing service, right? In the Cloud Hub, you get the customer can opt for load balancing also, correct? Okay. Okay. So if you are using VPC, then you can have a dedicated load balancer, right? But behind the scenes like uh, if you are not uh, buying any vpc if you are not buying this uh, dedicated load balancer so behind the scene your uh, shared load balancer will be used always clear can you repeat for me yes yes i can even show you with the diagram right okay So let's say this is a user, okay? So, and this is your worker one, and this is your worker two of one application, okay? So user will going to hit your shared load balancer, okay? And this shared load balancer, this is a cloud hub, okay? This is cloud hub. Okay. And this shared load balancer will balance the request between uh, worker one and worker two. Okay. Okay. So this is the use of shared load balancer. Okay. So cloud hub uses this shared load balancer. Okay. So what this load balancing does, uh, distributes the inbound HTTP request to the multiple workers, right? Mm -hmm. So that the load can be balanced provides the automatic mm -hmm. redirection to the new cloud hub workers after the mule runtime is resized or restarted okay so you mm -hmm. are aware of zero downtime 
in the mule application so let's say if you are deploying something right if you are doing the redeployment or if you are deploying something on the cloud hub okay it will mm -hmm. go with the zero downtime right because yeah. it is have it is handled by the sla your load balancer so let's say if your uh, one worker is starting till then your request will be sent to the another worker okay? correct correct a shared VPC uh, restricts the access to the cloud hub worker to the specific ports, that is 80, 40, 40, uh, 443, and 8081, and 8082. Okay. So okay. behind the scenes, uh, like if the customer is not buying any VPC, okay, if customer is buying VPC, that is a private VPC, right? But if customer is not buying any VPC, the cloud hub actually is deployed on a vpc that is a shared vpc okay oh. actual cloud so hub is only, on a VPC. you mean only for the port like 80 or 443 we can't change if you don't buy this yes yes so uh you, you may have noticed that uh, whenever you deploy anything on the cloud hub you can either use this uh, 8081 and 8082 or either uh, 80 and 443 right other yes, than that, yeah, you cannot yeah. use any port because it All is right. deployed in the shared VPC, which is handled by this. Okay. Right. Mulesoft hosted distributed object store and persistent queue services. Okay. So your object mm -hmm. store is being shared. Okay. So you uh, mm -hmm. here see you have this option that is uh, to use object store V2. You remember I uh, I told you the difference between persistent, transient, and uh, cloud uh, object store v2 in one class. We didn't uh, we didn't cover this. Yeah, I but covered I this. Huh? Uh, so yeah. you remember that? I don't think do we recover this, but no. Okay, I, I can explain that again. No issues, no issues. Mm. Okay. So whenever you create any object store in the project, okay, you get one mm -hmm. option, either persistent or either transient. Right, yep. In the object store, okay, yeah. So the difference between persistent and transient is that your transient will, uh, it will lose the data whenever there will be a restart. Okay, because it no will mind. be the data will be stored in the RAM. You can see that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Temporary place. Yes, in the temporary place. Okay. But oh. in the persistent case, it will be stored in the ROM. You can see that. Okay. ROM or in the disk space. Oh. Disk space okay. of worker. Okay. So this I'm talking about oh. the worker. Okay. So let's say that you opt for persistent okay mm -hmm. in that case and now you have checked this one also okay object store. okay then this persistent will be overridden this will be overridden by this os v2 then your os v2 okay. will be used that means your data will be stored in the cloud hub cloud hub object store not in the worker okay mm -hmm. if you are having persistent and if you are having object store v2 in that case mm -hmm. but if you are having transient and you are having object store v2 then it will not be overridden okay only in the case of persistent it will be overridden okay and if you don't want to use v2 that means if you don't want to use the cloud hub object store then you can go directly for the word either persistent or either transient clear okay so uh, my question is so when we are using v2 so mm -hmm. this persistence so you say like it's override which means we should use like only v2 or persistent we should uh, choose one of the two uh okay so if 
let me give you some examples by that you will be able to understand okay so let's say uh, there is one case where uh, you are extracting the token okay you are extracting the token which is mm -hmm. expiring in every uh, 10 minutes mm -hmm. uh, 10 minutes expiry time okay. okay in this case you are storing this in object store also okay so in this case what object store you will be using transient or persistent transit yes perfect so you can use the transient uh, object store in this case now okay. let's say if uh, you have some yeah. token okay mm -hmm. whose expiry date is let's say two days Okay. Until two days, you cannot recreate that. You want okay. to, you have to use the same one. In that case, you have to use persistent. Persistent, yes. Right. But let's say now the third case, the case is same. This this is the same case. Okay. Mm -hmm. But you are having multiple workers now. Let's say you are having three workers. Horizontal scaling okay. is being done. Okay. So what you have to do, you need to share this, uh, whatever you are going to store in this persistent uh, object store with all three workers. Correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. In this case, what you can use? You can use oh, just, no. object store V2. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah. Mm hmm so for opting for the object store v2 you need to first first select because in the uh, in the configuration when you are doing the configuration in any point studio the option will come either transient or either persistent so if you want to select object store v2 then you have to select persistent first okay oh. you have to select persistent then you can override it Okay, let's say if okay. you have selected transient and you are trying to override it, it will never be overridden. It will always use transient. Okay, so first okay. you have to select persistent, then only you can override that. Yeah. Okay. Yep, now it's clear. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, uh, in you... use of. Yes, now, let me so... screenshot now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you go to the paint? Yes, yes. Yeah, let me um, take. Okay, okay, give me what is running on. Okay, no. Yeah. Yeah, I did already. Okay, okay. Uh, let's go back. So, object store provides you uh, the persistent queues also. The queues are also working in the same manner. Okay. Persistent queues. So, these are also being shared and the object store. Okay. So, these are mm -hmm. distributed. These can be distributed. Hmm. Persistent object stores and persistent VM queues are implemented as a service. Okay. So, data survives after restarting and redeploying the new application, as I already explained. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, uh, this is not the, like, I have taken the screenshot. At that time, I wanted to see that how we can use a Java class. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how we can use Java in the da data view. That's why I have taken the screenshot. Okay, the service models for the customer hosted. So, whatever we have discussed till now it was related to the MuleSoft hosted. Now, we will be discussing regarding the customer hosted. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, in customer hosted runtime plane, okay, that means mm -hmm. where you are deploying your code, either on the bare metal servers or in the virtual machines, okay, can be configured mm -hmm. to allow the deployment of the multiple Mule applications and the domains to the same mule runtime. OK, 
okay so mm -hmm. you remember in the mules of hosted one for one application it will be only one mule runtime clear yeah but yes. in customer hosted multiple can be deployed on the same mule runtime clear okay 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 uh i can give you the best example for this uh we have any point studio we have uh, we always do the local uh, let's say not the deployment but uh, we always uh, start we start this application right let's like start and all right so for running the application we can run multiple applications at the same time correct mm -hmm. right yep right so this is that is using the same concept that in the same mule runtime we are deploying multiple applications okay uh, the customer can host multiple mule runtimes also and like the cloud hub other cloud based infrastructure can also be logged up okay so for customer hosted either go for bare metal uh, virtual machines and all either go for cloud based okay mm -hmm. so cloud based that means azure aws your gcp Mm -hmm. So it may not allow the deployment of the multiple mule applications or the uh, mule domains. Okay, so it may no. behave like your cloud hub. That means one mule runtime is equal to one mule application. Clear? Yes. Mm -hmm. And may not allow hosting multiple mule runtimes on the same virtual machine. Okay, so in the same virtual machine, you cannot host multiple mule runtime so you will be needing multiple uh, virtual machines for mule runtimes so let mm -hmm. me give you example as i said in the cloud hub behind the scenes it is deploying to the virtual machines it is creating a separate virtual mach machine for separate worker okay yes. and separate worker is equal to separate mule runtime okay similarly mm -hmm. here also if the customer is using their own cloud that means it will uh, it will be uh, replicating the same thing right so it you cannot have a multiple mule runtimes on a same virtual machine so one virtual machine will be one mule runtime in that case okay, mm -hmm. okay. so customer responsibility when the mule runtimes installed in the customer hosted runtime plane so what are the responsibilities that customer has to do? So the first one is, uh, okay, sorry, let me check the recording is on or not. Okay, the recording is on. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so for customer hosted runtime planes, the customer is responsible for provisioning and managing all the hardwares, all the virtual machines, all the cloud environments and the operating systems. Okay, so wherever you are going to deploy your code, you need to manage everything that will be managed by the customer only. MuleSoft mm -hmm. will not come into the picture. Okay, so the networks, proxies, load balancing, high availability, everything will be managed by the customer only. Okay, Java version and security enhancement, everything will be under the customer. Okay. Yeah. So these are sometimes the advantages because you are providing more security by using these things, right? But this can be the disadvantages because more maintenance means more money will be required, okay? And the customer have to do everything. They need to have their own IT teams and everything will be there, correct? So there are advantages, but there are disadvantages as well. So MuleSoft hosted versus customer hosted. So this is like a uh, summary. So first one uh, in the MuleSoft hosted, each Mule runtime is automatically installed in the separate Cloud Hub worker. So it will be automatic. Okay. So in the customer hosted, Mule runtime can be deployed to the various types of customer hosted infrastructure. So they need to first deploy it out. Okay. But it can be either on on premise or in the cloud. So it will be based mm -hmm. on the customer's requirement. Mm -hmm. Next thing is MuleSoft hosted. It can uh, the cast can host one Mule application in the dedicated worker. 
okay that means one worker is equal to one application only okay but in customer mm -hmm. hosted if you are using your uh, uh, on premise thing then what you can do you can deploy multiple applications on one runtime okay, okay. so this is a difference so and mule hosted no contention for host resources okay mm -hmm. and here uh, no uh, it can have contention contention what it means by contention here for host resources uh, just a second let me check what it can be disagreement that means conflicts can happen okay 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 so here uh, in mulesoft hosted as i mentioned that uh, the shared vpc is being used right the port numbers and everything are uh, handled by the mulesoft that it will be 80 or 443 for https case uh, it will be 443 mm -hmm. and for http it will be 80 Okay, and uh, it will be 8081 and 8082 by that. Okay, so it is clear in the MuleSoft. So there will be no conflict. Okay, but in the okay. customer hosted, there may be conflicts. Let's say your virtual machine, in your virtual machine, there are some other applications that are running on the same port. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in MuleSoft hosted, automatic updates and patches. Right. And but in customer hosted, customer need to check if there is any update or any patches needed or not. All the installation will be done by the customer only. So separate IT team will be required for this. Next okay. is MuleSoft hosted. It will be globally available. Right. That means you can I can log in any one platform from anywhere. Right. Yeah. But in customer hosted, let's say if you are deploying your code on uh, on premise, you will not be able to handle that you will not be able to log in it from the different place you need to go to the office from there only you can log into your server correct mm -hmm. yep, yep. in mulesoft hosted mulesoft provided security and sls okay so in mulesoft hosted all the security and uh, all the sls are being provided by the mulesoft okay but if you are deploying it to the customer hosted then customer defines and controls the securities and the SLAs. Okay. 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 Next is um, in MuleSoft hosted, managed by the MuleSoft hosted AnyPoint platform control plane. Okay. So the control plane is there. That is the runtime manager, let's say, is there, right? For the MuleSoft hosted. And in a customer hosted, it, it it can be either managed by the MuleSoft. That means either you can manage it from the AnyPoint platform or you can mm -hmm. have a customer hosted one which is not uh, used now that customer hosted that is pce right mm -hmm. correct yeah. so this was the differences this was the uh, okay so deploying to the mulesoft hosted runtime plane so how you deploy you already aware of that how we can deploy it out right so this was the option related to the cloud hub 1.0 right see here the region is defined right you can select the region while deploying it so this is how you can deploy your code from the runtime manager mm -hmm. oh, sorry so you can even decide the size of a worker you can decide the uh, number of workers okay so this is a walk through this is not required uh, for this one you can take screenshot for this one Okay, let me take. Okay, give me. Give me, give me one second. I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, now our uh, seventh module is done. Okay, it was small. Okay. Let's start with the eighth module. So eighth module is related to the AnyPoint platform architecture, the integration solutions. Okay. Uh, so it is the goal, like how your uh, uh, like 
how your disk or how your data is being shared. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So, ways Mule application can maintain the state. Let's say you are having multiple workers, then how you are going to share the data among these workers? Okay. If you are having mm -hmm. a share, how your data is being shared? Mm -hmm. Okay, so your mule event, uh, it's a mule event you are already aware. Mule event is equal to payload mm -hmm. attributes is plus your variables. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. So how your mule event is being shared and uh, how the state is being maintained for the mule event. How your data that is uh, object store inside object store you store the data in key value pairs. Uh, Next. So, like, can you repeat, like, key and value? We, we mean, uh, yes, okay. So, you only, are all mm -hmm. sorry, we only store like key and value. Uh, yes, yes, an object store always the data is being stored as a key value. Okay, so you can open your studio, you can select one object store. Okay, that, like, mm -hmm. uh, you can select the store store operation in that you will see that it will be first asking for the key okay i'm not having any point studio for now you can check it on your screen no okay yeah i'm opening any point studio now okay yeah i think it takes some time to open yeah till then we can complete this slide right 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 yeah it takes some time okay. yes so we have some vm queues also Right, VM queues are the queues that uh, in the same application you can share the data. Right. Mm -hmm. So next is batch job scope queues. Right. So whenever you are using the batch job, okay. So behind the scene, it uses persistent queues. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Next is file based persistent. Okay. So in local disk or on the machine, how you are st storing the data and all. External data store like database and in memory. So how the state is being maintained, we will be checking that out. Sharing the state using the mule event. Okay. So for first, uh, it is saying what is mule event? The mule event is a in memory object. Okay, it is an in memory object that carries the state. Okay, between the event processor components. So these are the event processors, right? We have one source and then we have on the right hand side, we have event processors. Okay. So from one mm -hmm. event processor to another event processor, we share the states. That state is your mule event. Mm -hmm. Okay. Across uh, transports by selecting which part of the event will be passed. Okay, so you can even select from uh, this mule event like which data you want to pass, either the payload, either uh, your uh, other components of your mule event, like attributes and all. Okay, the state is lost after the top level of the flow completes. Okay, so whenever this flow will complete, it will lose the state. Held within the heap, uh, so it's also lost in case of the JVM crash. So, in case there will be any JVM crash, okay, let's say if you are deploying your code on the uh, on the VM in the customer hosted environment, okay, and there is a JVM crash, that means the Java that they are having that crashes, then also the data may get lost, that state may get lost. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The design intent of the object store. Okay, so the object store was designed to store the state information between the flows invocation. Okay, mm -hmm. so synchronization information like watermarks. So let's say if you are having a database from which you want to extract the data based on the last modification time. Right, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you can use object store to store that last modification date. Let's say first time you stored one value that is today's date. Based on that, you extracted the data from the database. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is the 
uh, what is the new date time that means what is the uh, maximum date time that you will be storing in the object store now so that for the next iteration that value will be used so this is called watermarking correct so for watermarking you can use object store you can use the temporary state like the access tokens caches idempotency keys also in the object store so you can see that whenever you will select a cache okay so it will ask you that which object store you want to use so cache also uses object stores behind the scene clear okay mm -hmm. so uh, other application key value uh, use cases so related to some other use cases also you can use object store where you want to store the key values so that it mm -hmm. can be used later on okay mm -hmm. uh, next is several factors uh, change the runtime quality of the service okay let's see which factors whether an object store is configured as a persistent or, or non-persistent Okay, mm -hmm. so you are aware what is persistent now and what is non-persistent. Okay, so mm -hmm. next is the runtime plane or uh, the mule runtime configuration. Okay, so these things are the factors you can say based on which the configurations and the things depends for the object store, like how that is going to behave. Okay. okay. Choosing an object store instance to use in the mule application. Okay. Every mule mm -hmm. application is provided a default object store instance. Okay. So this is automatically selected as a default object store for the mule component that you use uh, an uh, an uh, object store. Okay. This is configured as a persistent object store. Okay, so there is one default object store also that you are going to use. Additional object store instances, also called partitions, can be added as a global elements. Okay, to the mule application. So you can create your own object stores as well. Okay, you can uh, provide the all the information like it will be persistent or it will be non-persistent. Everything you can provide. So let's say if you are selecting a object store, the store operation, okay? And mm -hmm. if you are not defining any object store there, that means where you are actually storing it, okay? That means it will be picking up the automatically created one, that the default one, clear? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So how a Mule application creates and use the Mule object stores? A Mule, uh, sorry, the object store connector can be added to the mule application or to the domain correct that connector mm -hmm. you can use create the new object stores as a global elements you can create new object stores and provides the operations to store and retrieve the data from the object store okay mm -hmm. depending where an object store is defined it may be accessible to other mule applications okay. okay an object store defined as a global element in the mule domain okay where you can use mule domain in the cloud hub environment you cannot use mule domain okay yeah. that means your object store data will not be shared among multiple applications clear mm -hmm. Yeah. Either if you are using object store V2 also, then also it will not share the data with other application. Clear? Mm -hmm. If you want to extract the data, for those cases, you can use Cloud Hub APIs. So there are some, uh, this platform APIs are available. You can use those APIs to extract the data from the object store. Then you can use it out. Okay. But this data will not be shared with the other application if you have to use it then you have to add the request connector and then extract the data using the apis okay then only you can use it but yes. if you are deploying like... go ahead go ahead i will ask you later hmm. yeah go ahead go ahead 
Uh, come to the last point. Yeah, you already uh, you start explaining. So just go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So an uh, object store defined in the global element in the mule domain. Let's say if you are deploying it to the customer's uh, hosted environment, let's say on premise. Mm -hmm. So you can have mule domain project where you can define all your object stores. Okay. In that case, your uh, your object store can be shared among multiple applications because your mule application, multiple applications are using the same domain. That means same configurations they are using. Let's say they are using the same port number. They are using same object store and other configurations as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next is uh, mule applications deployed to the customer hosted or the runtime fabric could use the object store v2 rest apis okay to access the cloud hub deployed uh, application persistent object store this is what i explained right that means mm -hmm. if you have deployed it somewhere and uh, you want to use uh, if you are using this object store v2 okay in that mm -hmm. case what you can use you can use the rest apis to extract the data from that object store Okay, so here, mm -hmm. if I added this and if I deployed my API and I want to use the data that is stored in this V2, then I can use mm -hmm. the REST APIs to extract that data. Clear? Okay. Clear, yeah. Okay. So restricting the access to the object store from other Mule application components. Okay. A private object store can be configured by a particular component in a mule application. To hide its object store data from any other component in the mule application. Okay. So you can create it private as well. I'm not sure is there any option or uh, like how we can create it private. I'm not sure. I need a studio for that to check out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yep. So I will write this in my notes. Or you can add it in the note. Oh, I don't think so. I am having a notes now. Need to check. Just give me a second. Okay. Is D seven? I'm not sure. It is not D seven. No, it is D eight. I think. D module eight. Yes. Module seven done. Module. Eight and the question is uh, I wait object so okay. Instead of configuring a global object store reference, certain components provide additional child elements to configure the object store. Okay, so that means uh, if you are gen creating the cache also, right? In that also you get the option for object store. Okay, so there are some child elements or other components also that allows you to configure for the object store. Okay, so configuration so options are the 
Yeah, let me share you this. Uh -huh. Like, I don't know. Unable to paste the picture. Did you get something? Mm, no, I haven't received it. You want to send me on uh, WhatsApp? Uh, okay, you, I received your high message. Yeah. No, no, I can't copy something. Okay, let me send you in WhatsApp. Okay, about this one. So I'm I'm logging to this one. Hold on. So WhatsApp. Okay. Give me one second. Mm. They should give the option for sharing the screen of students also. <laughs> yeah, so we can do. Give me one. Okay, this one. Okay. Test. Okay. Okay. Are you able to see? Uh, yes, I received yeah this is the object store i just try get it so the one we are discussing the key and value yes yes can you hear that like i only saw the values like a payload and mm -hmm. you have to provide the key also like uh, as you have a json object right in the json object what you do it is a key value pair right you are providing a key that let's say it is a name and the name is john Right. So here in object store also, you need to provide one key for which you are defining the value. So let's say if you are using the object store for watermarking purpose. OK. And uh, mm -hmm. the watermarking is the last modified date. OK. So that last modified date, that string is the key. OK. And the value will be the actual date or time. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, so my by this is key what? only. Yeah. yeah. The value is like it's showing me like payload, mm -hmm. uh, but we like only for example what I send you the it's like the keys. Uh, what can be the key? Like the value can be like payload, you know? Uh no no let me let me give you an example that I was explaining. Okay. Okay, so let's say uh, you have one database. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I thought I just pasted it. This is a database from which you have to extract the values. Okay. And mm -hmm. this is your flow. And in the flow, you have one scheduler, okay? And mm -hmm. uh, you have an object store, okay? And uh, mm -hmm. you have one uh, 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 database select operation, okay? Okay. And then you have some uh, request connector, okay? And then mm -hmm. you have store. So let me write that also so that it will be easier for you to understand. This is a scheduler. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is your uh, OS retrieve oh. objects to retrieve operation. Okay. Yeah, and this is your database select operation okay and this is your request connector to some api okay like where you are sending the data that you have extracted from the database okay mm -hmm. and then you have object store store operation okay okay and let's say this is a source and these are the event processes right so let's say the scheduler is running in 10 minutes every 10 okay. minutes it is running okay so what it will do it will first extract the value from the object store so which value it is going to extract we are using last modified time all right okay 
Okay, so last modified time uh, we have provided one default value also. Default value is let's say today's value, today's date time now. Okay, so uh, in the first go, when the first time the scheduler will run, it will first extract the now, right? It will be now time. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Let's say it is a next time. So now you are having the value in the last modified date. Let's say the value is today's date. Okay, so today is 18. 18 March 18 3 2023 right and the time is uh, let's say here it is uh, 9 57 p.m. Okay. okay so let's say the last modified time is this yeah okay so it extracted this value from the first one you got this value now you need to go to the database select operation. That means from this table, let's say this is the orders table. Okay. So from this orders table, it is going to extract the data based on this last modified time. Okay. And okay. let's say you got some entries. So you got some entries. There was one order. Uh, there was four orders. Okay. So four orders were there. You got the order ID, ORD ID. Okay. Order time, uh, sorry, last modified time, last modified time and uh, order details. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these three things, let's say you got from the uh, table and you got it for the four, four rows. You got four rows based on the select query. Mm -hmm. Sorry, this laptop is new for me. <laughs> so, it's okay. so order ID was one. Okay. Last modified uh, time was, uh, um, let's say it was this one. 18, 3, 20, 23. And uh, the time was 9. Uh, 58 okay and the order details let's say a b c okay similarly you got four orders right so here it was two and here it was three and here it was four let's say the order number two the last modified uh, time was 10. Okay. okay so you got this data based on the select query what was the select query it was select let's say star uh star 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 from orders where last modified time time was greater than this value that we extracted from OS retrieve. Okay. Okay. Say LT. Okay. So we ex extracted the data and we got this data. Correct. Now okay. we will send this data to some API by this uh, connector. Okay. And then what we have to do in the store one, we have to find the maximum value from this. Correct. Okay. The maximum value is this one for the time that 10 p.m. Okay. How about right. three and four? Is it the same time? Let's go. Yes, Are yes, you... yes. Let's say it is having the same time 958, 958, but this is okay. 10. Okay. So you need to okay. find the maximum value so that in the next iteration, when you will be getting the data, you will be getting the data that was last modified after 10 p.m. Correct? Okay. Because till okay. 10 p.m. you got the data now. Correct? Yeah, yeah. So you will be storing this data inside the object store. Again, you have to use the same key because how you are going to identify where you are storing. In the object store, you can store it like in multiple places. Right? You have to define one key. Correct? So your key will be again last empty. This one. Correct? Uh -huh. So this is the use of key in the object store. That means you are providing the uh, name in which you are storing it. Keys should always be unique. 
correct mm -hmm. because in database also if you are having this column names right this is like a key in which you are storing the value okay and in object store you can even define for one key how many values you can store in the configuration open the configuration mm -hmm. you will be able to see the option like how many values you can store right yep correct so this is how the object store is being configured and mm -hmm. this is the use of your key and values okay okay so storing the mule application state using the vm queues now it is related to the vm queues how we are going to store that so how vm queues are used in mule application okay so vm queues are configured as transient and persistent okay so they also behave similar to object store they could be either transient and either persistent but please remember that vm queues are not being shared outside your application okay mule application can use vm queues okay store the message it will use fifo that means first in first out so whatever message you are going to send publish once that will be consumed first okay and supports uh, supports at least once message delivery okay mm -hmm. messages must be serializable okay mm -hmm. quality of the service varies depending on the number of factors so what are the factors queue type which queue is being used okay that means it is persistent or transient okay number of mm -hmm. replicas of or the mule application that means how many workers you are going to use so how they are going to share the data okay mm -hmm. and then runtime plane and its configuration okay 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 so where you are going to deploy your code in actual so other messaging systems can provide other sla guarantees okay so there are mm -hmm. other messaging systems also other than vm queues that is like jms you have any point mq you have so but they are having different types of slas and guarantees okay mm -hmm. including sharing messages outside the mule application so by using the jms you can share the messages outside the mule applications as well okay uh you say in the vm we can't use outside no 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 it, because How vm is, is actually using your object store uh -huh. How? Okay. Was, okay. uh, you mentioned we how we're going to share outside of this how outside okay mm -hmm. okay yes so queues are like a tunnel you want to take a screenshot for this example yeah yeah yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I'm going to... uh you take you take the screenshot i'm going to bring a water bottle from my another room okay just give me a second yeah yeah i already took you can't continue yeah i'm back sorry so uh, we were on queues okay so i'm going to delete this whole
okay so related to the vmqs as you are already aware vmqs are like a tunnel right so from mm -hmm. this tunnel let's say you put this message from here there is a one person let's say okay so from you put this message this will be sent here to this new pc correct mm -hmm. if you are adding three messages so first second third so delivery will also be like this first this will be received second this will be received third this mm -hmm. will be received okay now it depends where this queue is where this tunnel is okay so in vm queues okay so in vm queues let's say we are having one application we are having one application for which we are having two workers also okay so okay. these workers will be sharing a memory because whenever you add a worker your uh, sla is being used and behind the scenes it uses the uh, distributed system right so mm -hmm. worker 1 worker 2 will share the memory right yeah. but this if we are having a vmq this memory will be shared among v w1 and w2 but let's say you are having a new application so this this application was for orders correct okay. and let's say you have you have deployed one more application that is related to the products mm -hmm. okay so this tunnel will not be accessible by your products application okay, okay. so this will be shared only by the orders one yeah. because mm -hmm. behind the scene it uses object stores and object stores behavior you are already aware of that it cannot be mm -hmm. shared correct yeah. so next yeah. case is let's say this queue is not available on the Mule soft end. That means you are not having this either on worker, not on even the cloud hub. Let's say you have another, this tool is, uh, this queue is there on the another server outside this, let's say on an internet. Let's mm -hmm. say you are having rabbit MQ. Okay. Rabbit MQ, you can have it on the internet also, right? So this yeah. will be accessible since this is on internet, you can accessible from here also and from here also. Okay. Yeah. This is what I was trying to explain. Oh, God. Okay. So, uh, yes. So we were here. So next slide is when and how to use the VM queues to share the state. Okay. Messages between the flows in the single mule application. Okay. So distribute the load when mule applications have been horizontally scaled. That's what I was trying to explain here. Let's say we are having multiple workers. They will be sharing the memory, right? So in mm -hmm. that case also, you can use the queues. So it will distribute the load. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, multiple cloud have workers with the persistent queues enable. Okay. So multiple, uh, multiple mule uh, run times in the cluster. Let's say you are having a cluster. You are aware what is mm -hmm. server group and cluster? we discussed about that mm -hmm. okay so if you are having it inside the cluster then also it could be shared and let's say if you are having a runtime fabric that means your containerization system then also it can be shared okay mm -hmm. so between the mule applications running in the same mule runtime and using the domain Okay, so if you have deployed this, uh, this, your applications, multiple applications on the customer hosted runtime plane, okay, then you will be having multiple applications on same mule runtime, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. If you're having a domain, in that case, it can be shared. Mm -hmm, okay mm -hmm. it can be shared among multiple application because you are having a domain project in domain project mm -hmm. you can do the configuration and then it will be shared among multiple applications but this is not there for your cloud hub yeah only understanding the state handling in the batch jobs okay so state involves in the batch job scope so initial uh, the initial request to the batch job holds the state in the mule event okay usually a stream of the input okay 
So mm -hmm. a batch job splits the message into individual records and stores them into the persistent queues. Okay, as I was saying that uh, your data, your records will be stored in the persistent queue. If mm -hmm. you want to check this out, what you can do, I, I can help you out for that. Create one project in the uh, AnyPoint Studio. Not now. Uh, it's like a homework for you. Okay, create one project awesome. in the AnyPoint Studio where you can have one listener. You can have a endpoint, any endpoint like test or anything for that. Okay, you can have one batch job. Okay, in the uh -huh. batch job, add one step. Inside that step, uh, what you can do, you can add one wait also. Okay, uh, wait. Uh, wait uh, uh wait that uh, that is a data weave uh, function uh, let, me, okay. let me explain that on the paint because i'm not having studio for now oh. okay. so what you can do let's say this is the flow okay you're having one uh, listener here so this will be mm -hmm. your source this listener Okay. After that, what you can do, uh, you can extract the data from a file or you can uh, have a set payload and uh, add the JSON data. Let's say you add one array. Okay. And you can have it like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Correct. Mm -hmm. And this is the set payload, let's say. OK. And after that, you can have one batch job here. Mm -hmm. OK, so inside the batch job, what you can do, uh, create one step, one batch step. OK, and this batch job, let's say the uh, record size, the size will be five. OK, define the size as five, that means it will be accepting five at a time, five records from this step, oh. correct? Mm -hmm. From this. So in the batch step, what you can do, you can first uh, add this number, whatever you are uh, getting that the payload, payload is equal to, you can say that payload. Uh -huh. Payload plus one, you can do that, right? Next. Mm -hmm. Next step, what you can do, you can have a data weave code. In that data weave code, you can add the wait function. There is one wait function that is there in the runtime, runtime live module. Okay. I, I you remember uh, I told you in the W lang you will be able to find all the functions that are available in the particular module. Right? Yeah. So let me show you as well that. Wait and data oh. weave. Okay, so you can define the time, like the timeout or the time. Okay, so till mm -hmm. then it will wait. It will add a wait here for this particular thread. So that means, let's say if you are having a one minute wait. That means you can go to your any point platform and go to the queues here. Mm -hmm. Go to the any point platform for that particular application. Go to the queues and check this out. Okay. Because you will get that time span, correct? You will get the time mm -hmm. span uh, in which this data will be stored in the persistent queues you will be able to see that that's why i'm uh, asking you to add a wait function okay otherwise okay. it will do the processing as fast as it can correct okay mm -hmm. so if you want to see you can add wait and you can check this out how the data is being stored in the persistent queues while using the bad jobs okay, okay. so we can check how uh, by adding this weight, how is adding inside the job? You say like one by one, how is going to implement? No, no, the no. no, no. See, uh, in the uh, like here inside the code, you are adding a weight function. 
okay that means it will remain in this particular batch step for that particular time okay so this data the data that you are going to process it is being stored in the persistent queue at that particular time right yep and mm -hmm. you want to check the actual persistent queues are being created or not you want to check that right so to check mm -hmm. that i am giving you one uh, like uh, one way how you can check this out okay got it. this mm -hmm. is not like explained anywhere this is not this is my idea that uh, how okay. i can check this out Okay. 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 So I got this idea that this is the way by which I can check that the persistent queues are being created or not. Because otherwise, it will do the processing. You will not be able to see any queues at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it will process the large data sets with the reliability and the recovery of the state of the processing in the event of the crash how it will going to recover because it is being stored in the persistent queues it is not being stored in the transient clear okay yep, yep. so if the storage is inferior or reprovisioned okay that means that persistent storage is now reprovisioned then it will be uh, it will it may cause the loss of the state that means let's say you delete this queue while uh, you are processing the data and you added the wait function let's say and the mm -hmm. code is waiting for two minutes in between you come here and you just deleted that queue that means mm -hmm. you the state will get lost correct yep yep so next thing is uh, state involved with the bad job scope so multiple thread processed of the blocks of records through the batch steps and the aggregations, mm -hmm. right? Batch jobs work with the multi-threads, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Individual record state is lost after the final step is completed, clear? Mm -hmm. So whenever your final step is completed, that means that particular thread completes its execution. So the mm -hmm. state will be lost after that. Yeah, yeah. And a bad job result object is passed on the on complete phase. You remember that a batch job result is the actual result. That means how many got failed, how many got passed. Yes. It will exactly. not contain any payload. Yes. Okay? yes. Mm -hmm. It will be having only the summary. History mm -hmm. files are stored on the disk. Okay. So useful for uh, troubleshooting and debugging. So I think uh, this for this one, you need to do some um, configuration by which you can, the data will be stored in the history files. Mm -hmm. okay. So this will be helpful for debugging and all. And the seven days at default. Sharing the state with using the file-based persistence. How many slides are there? Let me check. What's the page number? How to check the page number? Not this one. Da, 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 da. I don't use docs because uh, we were having Google uh, Drive and everything. So mm -hmm. we were not having any Microsoft products. OK. And the page layout, it should be there. Line numbers. No, I want page numbers. Mm -hmm. Got ha hanged. Not this, not this. View. No, 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 no. In the photo, this one. Got the page number at least. <laughs> okay, so we are on uh, page number. This was done. 
VMQs was done, batch job done. So we are on page number 147. And the eighth one is still 151. Yeah, we can complete this out today. Correct. So sharing uh, the state using the file-based persistence. Okay. So file-based persistence and runtime planes. So how the data is being stored and all. So in the Cloud Hub, okay. So in the Cloud Hub, in the Cloud Hub worker, so data will be stored inside. As I told you that the EC2 machines are there for each worker, right? Mm -hmm. So data yeah. will be stored inside the temp temp folder. Okay, mm -hmm. and inside the OPT uh, storage. Okay, so for uh, uh, runtime plane also, this will be the storage, this local disk. Okay. And for customer hosted, the server node, this will be the same. The folder structure is same. Okay. The temp, but this one is others directory. I think you can even change this out. But the temp is lost upon the reboot. OK. okay. When to maintain the state in the external storage? An external system or the store is required. Okay. When the mule, uh, let's say if you want to store the data and you don't want to use the, uh, let's say, object store for storing the data. Okay, so in that case, you want to use the uh, database, external database. So this is what we are talking about here. Okay, and okay. in some cases, the logs are being transferred or logs are being stored in some other uh, files and file directory and all. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so it is saying where to use external storage and uh, how how to maintain the state. Mm -hmm. So when the mule application requires additional guarantee, such as the transactional guarantees, okay, in that case, you can use external systems to share the data among the distributed applications. Let's say you want to, as I told you, object store data cannot be shared among multiple applications. Yeah. Correct. So what you can use, you can use another database where you will be storing the data and you can use it out. Let's say you are having some user and user and password information in the database. You can use that by multiple applications. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So examples include database. You can store it inside the database. You can store it on a SFTP server, you can store it on the Redis, you can store it on the S3 buckets or an external in memory data grid. Okay. So these are the some examples where you can store your data. Mm -hmm. Most common one is your database. So different external stores provide various quality of services. Okay. So the, th these different ones will provide different types of services. Right, so the persistence of data, transactional, or uh, various uh, invection policies like uh, least frequently used or more frequently used, and fast data retrieval through the partitioning, high availability, replication. So, this will be dependent on which external system you are using. Let's say if you are using database and that database is there on one particular system, okay, mm -hmm. so higher availability is not there, right. But let's say that database is clustered. That means there mm -hmm. are multiple servers on which that data is being replicated. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. in that case, you can opt for high availability. You will get the high availability. So this depends on which store you are using. OK. OK. okay. Trade offs between uh, different types of data storage. OK. Non persistent. In memory storage is fastest way to access the data. Okay. The non persistent ones means your transient ones. So transient ones will always be the fastest ones because you are actually storing the data inside the RAM, like a RAM thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So that will be the fastest one. Yeah. Next is the um, local persistent storage. Okay. So let's mm -hmm. say you are uh, you checked mark that persistence, okay, but you are not using that object store V2, okay. So that is the second fastest one, okay. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. First fastest, fastest is transient, and this one is the second one. Okay, so mm -hmm. this is slower. This is, but this will be slower than your non-persistent one. But this mm -hmm. will be more reliable because after restarting your uh, worker, the data will still be there. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next is replicated in-memory data grid storage lies somewhere between the in-memory and on-disk. Okay, that means let's say if you are having multiple workers now, correct? Mm -hmm. In mul in memory data, let's say the storage lies between the in memory disk, so data is being actually replicated. Okay, so this is also the way where you can store your data. Next is the external storage. External storage is the most reliable one. Okay, and can be shared. This one, let's say you are having one external database. Okay, so this is the most reliable and uh, but the most slowest one because you are connecting to the third party. Correct. Now, a question for example, the first two I understand, but the replicated mm -hmm. in memory and the external storage means uh, when you are like replicate uh, in memory and on disk uh that's my question so like in memory means so num persistence means it's in memory yeah so mm -hmm. like, on disk means we are like it is a uh, persistent storage like mm -hmm. okay according to me